Uh, a familiar tune joins us. Doom 2016 was a success. It sold well. It reviewed well. People liked it a lot. But there was still room for improvement. And damn it, they tried their best. After a heart-wrenching delay leading to the to a simultaneous release with a certain cute and cuddly game. Uh, Doom Eternal was released last year in March 2020. And <laughs> at last, <laughs> it showed the end of my my completed playthrough. I figured, but it was beautiful, the, the censorship. And at last, we end, for now, our Doom series with Doom Eternal. That is one new, somewhat new function, is Extra Life Mode. I'm gonna explain that a little bit later. But for now, of course, we're starting on Ultraviolence. Just like with Doom 2016. Against all the evil that hell can conjure, all the wickedness that mankind can produce, we will send unto them only you. Rip and tear until it is done. So 60% of the Earth's population has been consumed by hell, and we gotta go stop that. The reason that they are able to continue to consume hell is because there are hell priests on Earth, and if we kill them, that can help stop the continued invasion. And we're about to go kill one of them. <laughs> Not this guy. <laughs> I love that glory kill. So you can immediately tell this game is a it, it's got a bit of a different art style, a bit of a different tone. This game, I think, is not just because it's newer, but it's also a lot prettier. Uh, this game is beautiful. Uh, it is also definitely much more stylized, and a bit cartoonier. And I think that works just fine, honestly. Yeah, I, I was hesitant to call it cartoony, but I, I call it comic booky. It's got like that style, but I wouldn't say it looks like a cartoon. It's just stylized realism, I guess basically the same fucking thing. And that's pretty much what the original Doom kind of looked like. Not realistic, yeah. but stylized. Yeah. Yeah, like, I was gonna say, actually, for BJ's face, it... BJ. Ooh, Doom guy's face. <laughs> He's related. It's fine. Doom J. <laughs> but for Doom guy's face, they definitely tried to make him look like he did in the original games, albeit a bit less stylized. Right. Also, his hair's darker. 
So, one thing you might have noticed, no pistol. You start with your shotgun, and we're already getting our first weapon mod. Sticky bombs. These are a, a lot more useful than the grenade launcher from before. They're, they have many other uses besides just exploding shit, and they stick to enemies this time. And yeah, the important thing is they completely reworked the chainsaw. Yes, the chainsaw is no longer something you take out. You press the chainsaw key and it works. Another major difference is that you have one infinitely uh, regenerating unit of chainsaw ammo that you can pretty, once it's refilled, you can use it on any weak enemy, like these weak zombies, these zombies with guns, imps, stuff like that. Now, do not be persnickety with when you use the chainsaw. If you notice my ammo count, 16. Right now, that is my maximum number of shotgun shells I can hold. Your ammo is purposefully limited a lot in this game. And it, it's going to encourage you to use the chainsaw more. And it's going to make things a lot more, like, hectic. Because you will have times where you have to run around looking for a weaker enemy to chainsaw so you can get your ammo back. That part is contentious. I think I like that change. I think I like that it keeps you on your toes and keeps you paying attention. Also, the fact that you can use the chainsaw significantly more because of that. I think that's fun as well. So my personal issues related to the, the whole uh, low ammo thing are like more to another mechanic we'll see later on that really irks me, but... Yeah, the one thing I, that I know about this game is that they sort of dramatically changed the balance of the game so that they increased the difficulty so that you're paying a lot more attention to your ammo and your health so that you need to balance what you're doing more and you need to rely on the chainsaw more. Yeah, this game super changed up the flow of combat. Yes, it's faster, and above all, it's harder. This game, like, it, people thought Doom 2016 was too easy. Oh, ho, 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 be careful what you wish for, <laughs> my friend. Reduced by 36.8%. There are two hell priests remaining. It's the large lad. He he is a big boy. He has a specific name. Hold on. He is harmless. He is <laughs> he is a thrall, which is he is actually he is pretty much harmless to us. He is a slave titan of the underworld. Unfortunately, like it seems like a fun thing to fight, but he really just does whatever hell tells him to do, and mostly he's just there to carry the hell barges and such, which is uh, what we were on just a moment ago before we reached the Earth's surface. Ah, uh, does whatever hell tells him to do. Congress. I see you're not beating up the drones anymore. No, because they're not UAC drones. They're Vega drones now, and we like Vega. They're mine. So is your head. <laughs> Vega is our friend and owes us a blood debt. The glory kills are so much snappier in this game. They're, ah! <laughs> and the shotgun has a kick. Oh, a little bit. So I got the fully auto shotgun mod now. It chews through ammo, and honestly, once you get more weapons, it's not terribly useful compared to the sticky bomb launcher. But for the very early game, it's pretty nice. Well, also the sticky bomb launcher has added benefits that we'll see later, unlike the full auto, which doesn't really do much. Yeah, we should be seeing that actually here in a few seconds. But yeah, uh, going back to the uh, the glory kills being sped up, it, it's one of the it's another thing that like massively improves the speed of combat. Like they're always pretty fast, but they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, look who's back! It's the Arachnotron! It's been gone since Doom 64. It wasn't even in Doom 3. So, something else new. Eat it. Larger enemies have weak points. And that's one of my least favorite things about the tutorials. If you saw earlier, I turned the tutorials off. The tutorials love to get ahead of themselves and spoil enemies before you see them. If I left the tutorials on, you'll just get a sudden tutorial that says the Arachnotron's weak point is the laser gun on its back. And I was like, oh, apparently there's an Arachnotron coming up. I would have liked to have seen that first. Though, full disclosure, I highly recommend you keep tutorials on for your first time playing. They are very helpful and can help you figure out what things do uh, and, like, where to go. Because this game does function significantly different from Doom 2016. But if you've already played it, then keeping them off is very recommended. I mean, it's important to learn the weak points because fighting a bunch of enemies will be a huge pain in the ass if you don't know them. Yeah. The weak points, there, they do increase damage while they're there, and once you destroy them, it'll usually get rid of an enemy's most powerful attack. So another thing that I know I knew about the game ahead of time, I feel like 2016 kind of had this, but looking at this here, Eternal definitely plays a more of the slapsticky side of the brutality. Yes, this game has a... Like, like I said, the game's tone is very different. The story is taken more seriously... But the more comic booky art style lends to a sillier atmosphere when you're actually playing it. Also, I just want to take a second to, to point out the greatly improved map. It's hard to describe what makes it better, but it is so much easier to read. It's a really, really good map, honestly. I'd argue it's because it's a bit more detailed, but, uh... <laughs> I... <laughs> Welcome to my new shop, Jim. <laughs> also, as just as with Doom 2016, I will be going for 100% combat, which I will be getting this time. I won't be missing things, because it is easier to tell what you're missing when it comes to the combat points. And I will be getting 100% collectibles, which is a lot more fun than in Doom 2016. I wouldn't say that exploring for secrets was one of the most fun things about Doom 2016. I would say that about Doom Eternal. Because not only is it a bit easier to find out where secrets are, they take some thinking, but they aren't terribly obscure. The things you find are more fun, too. If you saw earlier, we were uh, talking over it. But we found a little, like, Funko Pop of a zombie. There's, like, Funko Pops of every enemy in the game that you can find. <laughs> and that's just fun. That's cute. I hate them. I hate them. The Funko Pops or this lady? Because I hate this lady. I hate Funko Pops. Now, with the tone, that UAC lady kind of taking the place of the bald guy hologram from Doom 2016. She is significantly more over the top. Now that the UAC is officially working with Hell to overthrow the Earth, she's just hamming it up with the evil the entire time. It gets even more ridiculous later on. She starts going on certain rants. Yeah, it's funny a little bit, but it also... I'm also kind of like, eh, it, it goes over the top sometimes. It's hard to take seriously. Some of it hits real weird. At least I don't hold back that corporations are evil. Yeah, this <laughs> in the most pure sense in this game. Corporations working with hell. To be fair, that's never been in doubt. Uh, some people still need convincing. And some people always need convincing. Speaking of evil corporations, I really want these Funko Pops of the enemies. Bethesda has produced a few of them, but they are significantly smaller than in the game, and they're like 30 bucks each, so I guess I don't want them anymore. <laughs> I think the problem with calling them Funko Pops is these are detailed. Yeah, they are They are detailed, but they're the most, like, that's just what I call them. They're just toys in-game, but I, they're comparable to Funko Pops. Also, given what you're collecting uh, just now, this game goes fucking all in on the lore. Literally everything will be explained. Everything. It is, and I will only be taking, like, 
short moments to... I will only be explaining bits and pieces. There's so much lore to read through, and it does affect the story more. So anything that's, like, really important to the story that isn't spoken in cutscenes, I will be ex I will do my best to explain at least a bit. Also, I, pro I picked up a life. This is weird. This is a really <laughs> weird choice. This game has lives, kind of. I have super mixed feelings. If you die with no lives, you just go back to the checkpoint, just like uh, Doom 2016. If you die and you have an extra life, you respawn exactly where you were with uh, like 100% health, and you can continue like nothing happened. Like it's an instant respawn. I'm fine with it, I guess. It makes this, it, it made this LP a hell of a lot easier, let me tell you that. But I really wish you could turn them off. I would rather not play with them. I feel like a lot of people agree. But you kind of, like, the only way you can not use them is to not collect them. And I'm going to try, like, since I, they don't count towards your collection, luckily. But I'm still going to go for them anyway. That man was dancing over the ledge. It was. This game is a bit more rough around the edges than Doom 2016. A bit. Oh, yeah. I never finished this game because I had constant technical difficulties with it. It was actually frustrating, personally. The first speedrun of this game right away was just finding a bug that let you jump outside of the geometry wherever you are. <laughs> Someone in the comments once said, I, I forget if it was for 2016 or Eternal, they said that the levels were more of a suggestion. <laughs> the cleansing of Earth is a necessary step on the path to a brighter tomorrow. It's true. With less of an Earth, there's more sunlight to go around. You know what demons love? The sun. I mean, you think they keep more people alive because hell is other people. <laughs> I mean, look at the demons. Hell definitely has no mirrors. <laughs> Either that or no hair salons. Well, there's no hair at all. Well, actually, no, the, the, the zombies with guns had, like, the same green flat top that the original zombies had. A lot of the demons do more closely resemble their classic look. The arachnotrons look a bit more like Doom 2016, but the imps have their spiky shoulder pads back, which is nice. God, this intensely frustrates me, but the precision bolt is too necessary. It's amazing in this game. Remember how shit it was? But it also means that micro-missiles are pointless because it is so stupidly necessary. Yeah, that's kind of true. But it is really fun to use. It essentially turns your assault rifle into a sniper rifle. It takes up more ammo, but it's very powerful, and you can headshot folk. Like this! Oh, that wasn't a headshot. I'll get one. <laughs> like something. Sad of the grenades compared to the first game. Oh, they're so much better. They're shoulder-mounted now. Also, here's a Kaka demon. I'll explain their weak point in a second. You kind of saw it. Uh, they're shoulder mounted, so you don't have to stop firing to shoot them, and they don't bounce as much. They kind of just flop in place and roll around slightly, so they're a lot more predictable. You'll see me using grenades a lot more in this game. I don't know. The grenades are part of one of my issues with this game. Yeah, what's wrong with them? How should I put it? My issue. One of my big issues with this game is it's over designed. I can see what you mean. But I'm not sure I agree. I'll explain it more as you get more power-ups, but my, my issue is there is too much to juggle at all times, and it's frustrating, personally. A little bit, but that will become more... What you're saying it will become more evident down the line. Yeah. Also, little usability thing I appreciate is that they deliberately made it so that all the pickups pop a lot more. Yes, this game's very colorful. This level's very red, like Doom 2016. The color palette will immediately become more diverse starting in the next level. You'll you'll immediately see a difference. It's the easy in. Yeah. But, like, the pickups you find in the world are, uh, A, much brighter. Like, literally brighter. They glow a bit. Uh, and also, largely, they aren't shaded, so you can see them pop. Yeah, they're glowy. Like, especially the ammo is a gigantic rainbow of color. And all of the collectibles are, like, floating and spinning like a classic video game, so they're easier to uh, notice as well. 
Oh, I mean, like, the health pickups in the world and the ammo pickups in the world. Like, those little jars, how they fucking... They glow. They're yeah. very bright and they're impossible to miss. Yeah, coming off of... I, I like to describe certain video games as video gamey. Because some of them try for a more realistic thing, I guess. They're like video games, but they don't want you to know they're video games. I, I, I don't know how to describe it. But this game is video gamey. There's usually more focus on immersion and that kind of thing to, to really get you into it. Yeah, Im Im immersive. There you go. This game doesn't try terribly hard to make you feel like you're Doom Guy and you're picking up these items and stuff. Yeah, there's giant glowing boxes of ammo and vials of health and giant question marks to see where you found a secret. They definitely want you to feel like you're Doom Guy, but more in the sense that you are an unstoppable fucking killing machine. Oh, yes. You're welcome. Your did she lose her skirt us. thing? She never had one. Pretty sure she did. Whatever. Look, I'm fucking tired, dude. Oh. So, <laughs> that's the Kako Demon's weak spot. If you shoot a sticky bomb or a grenade into its mouth, it'll instantly become staggered and make a little gulp noise. One bit of annoyance is if you do not have a grenade, like yours is on cooldown, uh, or you don't have the sticky bomb launcher equipped. The Cacodemon is an absolute fucking nightmare to kill. Yes, they're... Well, I find it easy enough to just swap over to my sticky bomb launcher. I never actually use the grenades to kill them. Ow. But yes, you do not want to ignore Cacodemons. They'll eat you. They'll eat your ass. And they have gobs and gobs of health if you do not use their weak point, which is one of my issues with this game. Like, I feel like there's an over-reliance on the weak points, personally. The fucking tentacles, they're in these holes, but not all of them. They're just stupid and annoying, I hate them. They're just there as a fuck you. More stuff. Cheat codes. You can use these, um, af well, you can use them, I think, whenever you want. They actually don't affect your progression. There is one thing you actually can't do with cheat codes on, but we haven't reached that left. Uh, we haven't reached that yet, not left. But mostly you can, if you want to play the game and have an easier time, you can enable cheat codes and it won't affect your progression or anything. Hello. The Cacodemons are so funny in this game. Oh, that guy's smart. He actually ran out <laughs> of the way. I think he just realized, oh wait, I'm angry at you. <laughs> this guy was my little brother in the, in the before life. I guess that would just be the life. Damn, I could go for hot cups. Now, I'm playing okay because I've played this game before. Do not be afraid if you get your ass kicked a few times. This game takes some getting used to, and in my opinion, this fight is going to be your first real test. On my first playthrough, I died several times in this fight particularly. This game loves big shooty killy murder arenas. If you thought Doom 2016's fights were hectic and they threw a lot of enemies at you, again, be careful what you wish for if that was too easy. Especially when we introduce another mechanic. I'm starting to notice the game also has a lot more comical sound effects. Yeah, like... The gulp. The pop. The pop when you headshot people. This game has great sound design, and Mick Gordon does return for the music for this game as well. I think only for the base game, though, because there was a falling out between Mick Gordon and Bethesda. Yeah, for the DLC, it was somebody else, and they did a great job. Yeah, because Mick Gordon lied about something and played the victim, and then Bethesda aired his dirty laundry. Forget about the future to suffer is to be present. I'm not going to stop every time, just the first few times, to listen to whatever nonsense she says. 
Yeah, luckily they made sure it was mixed loud enough Whoa. that you can just... Where'd he go? <laughs> man, he murdered that man so hard he vanished from existence! No, I didn't murder him yet. He was staggered. He was still alive. He just GTFO'd. <laughs> I'm going back to hell. Fuck this. He logged out of the cheater. <laughs> Rage quit. That reminds me. Let me know in the comments if you want to see like a video going over the multiplayer because it is more unique and significant in this game, but I don't know if I want to include it in the LP itself. So let me know if you'd be interested in seeing a quick episode just regarding the multiplayer of this game. Also, just the fireballs shooting. <laughs> this is this is such a video game. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. Also, it's a little thing. I don't like the UI as much on this. What's cool about the UI, though, is like, it's very customizable. You can include things and not include things you don't want, and the colors are even customizable. You can change how the colors are as well, if you'd like everything to look more like monochrome or anything. Because there are a lot of colors. Well, also, it's good for colorblindness stuff, because there's a lot of colors in the UI that are used for keeping track of things. But I just, I don't like the look of it aesthetically as much. The con maker is nearby. She is inside that demonic citadel. I will mark her location on your HUD. My name's Hal. This is my moving castle. The gathering of hell priests is located just above your location. My scans indicate there is a lift at the center of this facility. This game just fucking drops you in deep with the plot. Vegas is kind of jazzed about that. <laughs> yeah, Vegas got a lot more pep in his step. You saved his life. I did. So if you noticed, I was not worried at all about points of no return. That's because it's not a problem in this game. Once you near the end of a level, you unlock fast travel, which lets you just teleport to earlier points in the level. Hmm. The only thing you need to keep an eye out for is the notification that says it is activated. Because right now I can fast travel, all the enemies stay dead, and I can go back and get any secrets that I missed. But if you end the level, if you go forward too far and the level ends, the only way you can go back is to replay the level and get all the secrets you missed, but also still kill all the enemies. Yeah! <laughs> there are some areas with very questionable fast travel points that does irk the hell out of me, but... Eh, a little bit. But it's overall, it's a very welcome addition. And, uh, unfortunately, this one right here, it's just to the right of where we were a second ago. It's like one of the only things I needed a guide for because I didn't want to go too far and end the level on the first level, but I also couldn't find it because I didn't go forward too far. <laughs> the con maker is present at this gathering, but when outside of her domain, she is by all accounts indestructible. So that was a lot. Uh, that was the Conmaker, who is a part of the Maker race from Erdak. Erdak is essentially a super simplification. Is it's the equivalent of heaven. Like we're fighting hell. Erdak is heaven essentially. 
The Conmaker is the leader of Erdak, who is selected every 10,000 years by the Maker people. And she is up to some naughtiness as well as the Hell people are. So uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about that as the game goes on. I don't want to get too far into it already. So heaven or hell, nobody is good. Nobody's good. Yeah. Heaven or hell, let's rock. I guess I can share her general motivations. Everybody wants Argent Energy. Earth wants it, but also the Makers want it, because it seems that the Makers themselves are having their own energy crisis, and they plan on essentially using hell to rid Earth of all of its souls, which create Argent Energy, so that they can continue to live on. See, right away with that cutscene where Doom Guy was just standing and listening, and you explaining that, I think, man, you guys overcomplicated this. A little bit. This game went hard into the lore, and if you really care to look into it, you can. And it definitely has a bigger focus. But it is overcomplicated, I'll say. It's not the best story, but it is engaging. I was never like, okay, sure, dude, whatever. When playing this, I was interested in it the whole time, if that means anything, even if I didn't always entirely understand it. My comprehension is just generally bad, so even, like, the best stories I'm sometimes lost on. But and simultaneously, though, you can more easily skip by it if you don't want. You, of course, can not read the codex. And also, most of the cutscenes are skippable, which they were not in Doom 2016, since they were, like, real-time first-person cutscenes. These are more traditional cutscenes that tend to go into the third person, so you can skip them if you really don't care or and just want to get to the gameplay. So we've already killed one of the Hell Priests. There are three? Three. Four? Three. <laughs> I need a reminder, apparently. One day we'll be free. There were three. <laughs> there are three Hell Priests. We've killed one of them, and as Vegas said, that has significantly already decreased the amount of demons that are coming to consume Earth. So hopefully we can get all three of them killed and uh, stop everything from going to literal hell. <laughs>